In the previous videos, we've created our own custom game. In this video, we'll take a look at the level editor that comes with our game. We can use this level editor to create our own custom levels and load them. If we go to the top, we can see the menu. The menu enables us to create a new level, save the current level, load an already existing level, and run the game. Below we can see the viewport. In this viewport, we can place all our items. We can find the items on the right hand side. For instance, here we can see the block pane. In this block pane, we can select several blocks and place them on the scene. The X blocks is a block that doesn't have a visual representation, but it does have collision. All the other blocks also have collision. There are different tabs. For instance, in the MISC tab, we can set the player's start position. In this case, we'll place it on the invisible block. And we can set the finish. If we reach this finish, the game is succeeded. We can also place triggers. Triggers are buttons. We can enable buttons and disable buttons, so buttons have a state. If we enable or disable a button, it will have an effect on other items. These are called receivers, which we will place later on. If we right click the trigger, we can turn the trigger on. We can also turn them off and set a time. If the time is zero, the trigger stays on indefinitely. If we set the flip time to one, the trigger will stay on for one second, then return to its previous off state. With the pick receiver button, we can pick a receiver that the button influences. If we go to the receiver tab, we can place receivers. Currently, we can place a door or a flip bridge. We can then connect the button to our flip bridge by clicking the pick receiver button. In this case, we're going to pick this receiver. We can select multiple receivers for one trigger. We can finish selecting receivers by clicking the stop button. Now our bridge will be controlled by our button. So if our button is on the on state, the bridge will be open. The flip bridge will be open. If the button is in the off state, the flip bridge will be closed. We can also place props, for instance like this bridge. Note that props don't have collision. So if you want the player to be able to run, on this bridge, we need to add invisible blocks below. Otherwise, the player would fall through. You can place a variety of props. Now let's load the level we've been playing in our game all along. As you can see, this is the level we've been working with so far. If we click on the first trigger, we can see that it controls two doors. If we click on another button, we can see that it also controls two items. The button can control more than two items. For now, let's move the player's start position to somewhere else. So let's move him to the top. If we then run our game, you will see that our game starts and the position of our player is moved to the start position we've just defined. You can play around with this and add stuff to this level, or also delete stuff. All our assets, for instance these blocks, are loaded from an XML file called toolassets.xml. All PNG files are located in the appropriate folders. This toolassets.xml file corresponds with all files we've been using in our game, so it has the same structure. This means you can replace assets in our game and add new assets. Just make sure you update this XML and you update your game to load the appropriate 3D model. So, Note that these are PNG files, while well, of course we are loading models in our game. There, that's it. That's the basics of our level editor. You can play around with it and add extra stuff. I hope you've enjoyed this series and that you have enough knowledge to start building games.